Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic. Positronic. I'm Barry P. Cook, and I'm here to review the latest episode of Superman and Lois. It's called Man of Steel. We start off with the discussion about how Jordan needs to sort of ride it out with his hearing issue. Clark, you know, had checked him out at the fortress, and it turns out he was just experiencing normal growing pains of a Kryptonian coming into their powers, and that Clark has to sort of train him to deal with it. And it sort of brought up a memory to me of part of the film Man of Steel, where the Kryptonian villains that come down to the planet are having the same problem, where their senses are overloaded, and we see flashbacks of Clark having that problem when he was a kid. So this kind of was similar to that. Then they have a scene where it shows Edge talking to Leslie Lahr and expressing the fact that he's upset that his efforts are under siege from Lois and I guess Lex and Superman all at the same time and he can't get his ex-Kryptonite. So he's ticked off. Oh, poor baby. Then we have a scene where Lois confronts Lex about not being Marcus because remember he had told her he was Marcus. So she confronts him and says, I know that's not who you are. Who are you, who are you really? And he doesn't really come clean. But he does then have a flashback and apparently he and Lois were a thing on his world. And by a thing, I mean a married couple. They even had a daughter. And it looks like on his world, we already kind of knew this, but it looks like on his world, evil Clark went, you know, all mad queen on Metropolis, like just burning stuff down with his heat vision. And apparently he did it with the help of other Kryptonians, which is really weird. Um, and it's also a sort of, nod to what happens to Superman in the video game series, which I think is called Justice League Gods Among Us. And also what eventually happens in the future in the Snyderverse with Superman, whether we do or do not actually get that movie, it's apparently what would have happened in that storyline. So again, it's mirroring other iterations of, of Superman. And it's an interesting angle to come at the Superman character from, because of course, anybody with that much power could just as easily be a very cruel sociopathic despot as they could be the complete opposite. So it's a very interesting thing to look at because Superman's always going to be walking that line where he has to make sure he doesn't go that way, you know? Anyway, then they flash over to the kids' high school where Sarah is suspicious that yet again, Jordan isn't in school. And she asks, where's Jordan? And Jonathan kind of says, oh, he's just not well. And she kind of doesn't buy it. But there you go. So I think they're hinting at she's going to figure it out or they're going to have to tell her eventually. But anyway, there you go. Then we cut back to Lex and he, you know, is I think talking to Lois, if I remember correctly, and he says, what's going on here is Edge wants a super army. That's why he's trying to give people powers with X kryptonite. And I'm thinking, is that why Lex took his eye off of Superman? In other words, in the first couple episodes, he was just hell bent on one thing, getting Superman. Now all of a sudden, He's taking the covert approach and he's trying to get to Edge and somehow block his efforts to make an army, which seems to be a change of direction from what he was doing originally. But anyway, he soon realizes that Clark has investigated his trailer by entering it because the AI says someone was here and he just goes, oh, don't worry about it. That's just Lois's husband. Now, I had thought that he had known that Clark was Superman, but I guess he didn't on his world. He just knew that Superman's real name was Kal-El. So I, I don't know. I thought he knew more than that, but apparently he doesn't. Anyway, he's pissed because Superman took his Lois away from him and his daughter. Again, a reflection of what happens to Superman in different Superman storylines. He loses Lois, and that's the catalyst that makes him go nuts. But it seems now that Lex isn't out for revenge so much as he truly doesn't want the same thing to happen again, to a different earth. And again, that's a shift because it seemed like he was out for revenge more than anything else. He kind of mentioned, I don't want it to happen again, but it seemed like he was more out for revenge. Now it doesn't seem that way as much. So I don't know. I don't know why they would have made that shift, but it seems like they did. I like this much better. So that's cool. He ends up now, Lex does, blocking the road with his RV so that a shipment of X kryptonite can't get to where it's going. Clark and Lois show up because they're trying to investigate this whole thing. They realize he's not really this Marcus character and that he's a Luther and that he might even be Lex from another world. And they confront him 
while he's stealing the cargo after having stopped the convoy. And Leslie Lar listens into this whole conversation. But he, he then arranges to meet Superman. He arranges with Lois to meet Superman. So then they had a scene where I guess he's working on a trap to hurt Superman when he shows up. And they flash back to him working on something else when he was making a suit of steel. And I was thinking, oh, okay, that's Lex Luthor's mech. Lex had a mech in some versions of the Superman story. So that was sort of interesting. We then see that Jordan is making some progress. He's kind of getting a handle on controlling this thing with his powers that gives him massive headaches. He overhears Jonathan talking to Sarah and feels like he's kind of hitting on her and doesn't like that, so he confronts him. And they kind of argue, and then that leads to an episode, you know, with his hearing and all that. So that wasn't good, but that happens. Superman shows up to meet Lex, and they're talking, and Lex hits him with red sun energy. And it, you know, of course, knocks him down, and he beats on him a little bit. And he says, you know what? You're not the man of steel. I am. And I didn't think anything of that because I'm not too bright sometimes. But at the same time, they cut away to Lois and she discovers that on their earth, this guy's real name, you know, his counterpart in this world, his real name was John Henry Irons. I'm like, John Henry, that sounds familiar. It sounds like the name of the guy who was driving spikes on the railroad with a massive hammer, kind of like the one that Lex is using on Superman right now, holy shit. He's not Lex Luthor. The AI just thinks he is on his RV and his ship, but he's really John Henry, who in DC Comics is Steel. The character that took over as Superman when Superman, I guess, at one point was killed by Doomsday. And so that's, why he's black. <laughs> he's not Lex Luthor. He's this steel character who is black in the comic books. So now it all makes sense, at least, which is great. And other than Shaq having done this character in live action, I don't think it's been done before. And that version was eh. So this is very cool. And I think this guy's whole backstory is cool. He's pissed off that Superman went rogue and he's determined to keep it from happening. And he's got this giant hammer that works with kinetic energy, kind of like Black Panther's suit in the Marvel Universe. And so that, you know, it gets stronger with the more force that it has to come up against. But Lois now, knowing that this guy is a fraud, is heading to the meeting place to try to help Superman because I think she feels like he's in danger. And the kids do the same thing because Jordan is able to hear this guy threatening Clark from a distance. I don't quite how that works, but he's able to hear it. So, because I mean, why wouldn't you just hear everything? Why would you hear that partic in particular? But anyway, so they head there, even though neither one of them was supposed to really drive, they head there and they smash the Kent's truck <laughs> through the wall of Steel's, I guess, lair or garage or whatever it is. And Superman tells them they have to take out the lights. So they take out the lights. And fortunately, when they broke up the truck, it had knocked Lex, uh, I mean, Steel down. And he goes to get up, but Superman goes to confront him. And Lois has to literally stop Superman from like wrecking his shit, <laughs> which was cool. But they ended up putting him in custody. And so that threat is now over, which is great. But the character is definitely going to still be in the series. And I think it's a good character, so I'm looking forward to that. The flashbacks to his past life where you can tell he lost his daughter and he lost his wife and he's grieving were just very well done and i think this is a good character with a lot of heart even though he's kind of not a good guy <laughs> it'll be great to see how this character plays out and maybe can be redeemed and again i love a great redemption story as i've said before now before the episode ends we have a scene where lois and clark decide they've got to come clean with the boys and not keep things from them anymore and answer all their questions so they begin a Q&A session with the boys so the boys can find out things that they need to know and that they've been wondering about. And that's where the episode ends. I thought this episode had less family drama than the last few, or than it has, you know, than the show has had up to now. Um, there still was some, but it wasn't so much. The episode focused more on John Henry and Morgan Edge and Lois and Clark and, and Superman. And I thought that was really cool. So I'm glad that they 
did that. I like this episode and I look forward to the next one, which as far as I know is going to be on this week. They're not taking a break like the other shows. So, uh, or two of the other shows anyway. So, oh no, or all three of them. I think all three of the other shows are on a brief hiatus and this one is the only one that's going to come back next week. Anyway, I'll be back with a review of the next episode. Until then, my friends, I wish you once again, peace and long life.